Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. You're watching In Deep on the Delta. This is the weekly Delta report for the week of October 7th. And I'll start off with letting you guys know how my partner Troy and I did down at the Wild West Tournament in Don Pedro. Uh, I want to appreciate all you guys that uh, wished me well uh, last week after I announced we were going to be down there. And uh, I think we could have had a little more uh, karma going our way. But uh, we went down, we fished for five days, and it was absolutely brutal. This was the, the TOC, the Team TOC, and my partner Troy and I decided we were going to go down and we were going to fish to win the tournament. We wanted to fish big, and we knew that we would have to catch a couple of big fish uh, in order to put ourselves in a position to win that tournament. So we fished big, and, uh, you know, in the famous words of Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. We might as well have been last because we didn't win the tournament and it was extremely disappointing for us. I can't remember when the fishing has been that tough in the last 30 years on any given body of water for me. Uh, it's extremely disappointing. I, th I think the last time I've been that disappointing was when Diane Borelli dropped me for James Riley. That was in the fourth grade. So we're going to leave it at that and we're going to move on to... Uh, to uh, the report here. Uh, I will um, uh, say that I, I want to uh, uh, give Garrett Maddox and Scott Berg a shout out. They were the winners at the tournament. They put in, I think, 23 or 24 pounds in two days, which uh, absolutely great weights. Everybody struggled down there. Most guys were catching six, seven pounds a day. It was um, very difficult. So anyhow, congratulations to those guys. They were local guys, uh, I think from Escalon and, and Oakdale, with many years of experience on that lake and it, it, you know, experience pays off in those situations. So uh, congratulations to Garrett and Scott and I also want to talk, uh, give a, a shout out to the Wild West uh, team that puts on the tournaments. I don't know all the fellas names down there but you know they had a tough year this year with uh, COVID and low water and, and everything that was going on but they did a really good job um, getting everything together and they, they ran a really good tournament circuit so for you guys that are looking for a tournament circuit to uh, fish you know check out Wild West and I also learned that uh, I didn't know this until I looked on their website but they have a kayak division so you kayak guys should get down and check out that if you're looking for a, a good tournament circuit to fish with that um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the mother load and and clear lake because i think it deserves an update and we'll start off with clear lake i, I tried to get a hold of clear lake bait and tackle and it seems like they are in uh, uh, probably store hours or winter hours they're reporting that all the ramps are closed at least all of the um, public ramps are closed at clear lake so I do have a few friends that have been going up there and just in the last couple of weeks they, you know, when I've talked to them they said it's, it's getting to the point where even if the ramps open they're not putting their boats in. It's just you know, too shallow, too many problems and uh, Clear Lake for bass boats is probably not uh, a player. With that being said, for you kayak guys, Clear Lake is always a player, I don't care how it's fishing, especially when there's no tournaments being held and all the ramps are closed and there's little or no bass boat traffic. Putting in a kayak and fishing, the lake is open, just the ramps, the public ramps are closed. <clears throat> uh, so if you can put in a kayak and fish Clear Lake, it's always a place that you want to uh, keep in mind and go up to. So kayak guys, let me know if you go up there and how you're doing. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a really great place to do some kayak fishing. Uh, when it comes to the mother load, I did talk to John Leasty, uh, and if you're going to the mother load, the place to fish is going to be Maloney's. <laughs> I can tell you, stay away from Don Pedro unless you want to get your heart broken, but uh, John's getting fish on Maloney's. It's not on fire, but he's getting 30 or 40 fish guiding people up there, and um, they're not big fish, but the, you know, two, two and a half to three pound fish providing a lot of action. The lake is in it's low but it's in good shape and it's a lot of fun to fish so if you're going up to the mother load if you want to get away from the delta you can head up there and and have some action at maloney's and i will keep keep an eye posted on on clear lake and, and maloney's and, and the mother load just to give you guys a, a quick uh rundown of what's going on up there so on to the delta and i will start off by saying um i think my 
what the heck is the water temperature here? Yeah. It's 70 degrees right now at about 9 o'clock in the morning. And I think when I started out this morning, it was about 68. So the water temperature in the last week or so has dropped fairly dramatically by, I'd say, 3, 4, maybe even 5 degrees, depending on where you're at. So we are definitely in that transition period of time on the delta going from summer to fall to winter we're going to be experiencing some some changing conditions as the weather gets cooler but for right now it's a great time to be on the delta especially i think this next week we're gonna um, we're gonna get a lot cooler weather who knows what that'll do to the bite but we're hoping that it kicks the bite in gear and we're going to get into how the uh, the largemouth bass fishing has gone in the last week even though i haven't been on the river um, I've gotten quite a few reports and I've been in contact with the shop. So let's start off with the stripers and the stripers are going strong. This is so far has been a really good year for the uh, the stripers. Lots of fish being caught. Most of the fish that I got uh, information on uh, this week is on the Sacramento side and most of the guys are trolling and they're trolling around uh, Rio Vista, you know, up around Decker Island and in that area. There are fish being caught out here in the San Joaquin, but if you're going strictly for stripers, I would suggest, you know, going out a big break, staying, you know, somewhere from Pittsburgh to, um, uh, to Rio Vista, uh, throwing on some trolling gear, and you're gonna catch stripers. Uh, I also got some reports from uh, one subscriber was out in Montezuma Slough, uh, casting, um, I think he was casting jerk baits and other, other fast moving baits, and he was doing really well on, um, uh, stripers. So Montezuma Slough is still hot and you know the bass guy, the largemouth bass guys that are fooling around anywhere out here right now, you got a chance to get into some stripers. So stripers are going to have a strong season and you, you definitely want to be fishing uh, what I would call multi-species trips. Make sure you have something like a, a big jerk bait or a walking bait or uh, even a uh, an a rig to throw for stripers if you're out here and you start seeing some some of those bigger fish boil around. So that's a striper report, and and I think um, uh, next week I'll get another report from Jeff Suhu from Suhu Sport Fishing, and Jeff usually has some good inside information on what's going on with that. So we'll we'll come uh, get back to that uh, next week. Uh, largemouth bass. Let's start off with what happened with the Yamamoto tournament. Now the Yamamoto tournament, for you guys that aren't familiar with it, it's an open tournament and it's not a, you're only allowed to fish Yamamoto baits and it's not a five fish tournament. It's a team tournament and uh, it's an hourly weigh in and they pay the five biggest fish. So if you catch a four pound fish at eight o'clock, you can weigh in a four pound fish and at nine o'clock, if you catch a eight pound fish, you can weigh in a, an eight pound fish and whatever. They pay from 500 to $100. First biggest fish, 500. Um, smallest fish, I think, is 100, or maybe it's 150, but it kind of works like that. This year, it was literally pitiful. Um, as I said, I haven't been out here, so I haven't been fishing other than this morning, and we're going to go over what I did this morning. But generally, five, six, seven, eight, nine pound fish are taking the prizes. This year, there were hours that went by that there were only two fish weighed in. So that means if you would have caught a 14 inch fish, that could have been a $300 fish for you. Nobody weighed in a fish. They weighed in, you know, only two fish were weighed in. So those three bottom fish didn't get paid out. The other thing that was just absolutely crazy, I don't know how many two and three pound fish were weighed in that cashed checks. And we're talking two and 300 dollar check so you remember in a two-day tournament you have six weigh-ins each day man you could have you could have you know made a thousand dollars catching two pound fish in this tournament and that's that is just so out of the norm you would think that the delta is just you know fishing terrible but i have a different take on it and this comes in to play with all of the reports that i have been getting and the reports from the shops and the reports from the shops uh, have told me that their customers have seen a, a slight downturn in in the largemouth bass fishing in the last week. I got fewer um, reports uh, last week than I did the week before, and that usually tells me that the fishing isn't quite as good. Like I, I've reported to you guys before, when the fishing's good, everybody's sending me a report because they want to tell 
how great they did. This week there were fewer reports, but the people that were reporting were getting pretty decent numbers of fish. They're not getting big fish, but they're getting, you know, nice uh, fish in the two to three, uh, and a few four pound fish, and you know, everybody now and then gets a five or six pound fish out here, but they're, they're catching fish. Here's the deal. Most of my reports, a matter of fact, all of my reports were on moving baits. Um, if you're going to fish a topwater, whopper plopper for some reason has been a good bait the last couple weeks and most guys are throwing bone. But by far, the technique to throw out here is subsurface moving baits. Jerk baits, Vision 110 always catches fish out here. Um, uh, jerk baits, crank baits, square bills, uh, square bill crank baits. Um, spinner baits have been good and also uh, chatter baits. So those four baits are all moving baits and the reports that I got from people that were not fishing the tournament were doing pretty darn good. Now remember the Yamamoto tournament, they're only allowed to fish Yamamoto um, products. So most of those people were fishing very slow with plastic baits. Uh, worms or, or jigs or you know drop shotting with with some type of creature bait that Yamamoto makes. So the key takeaway from all of this is that if you're coming out on the Delta don't let that Yamamoto tournament throw you off but if you're coming out here you want to start off with um, moving baits. Uh, I came out this morning just you know, to get the stink off of uh, Don Pedro so I put on a blue back Vision 110 and I threw it out here for about an hour and I think I caught seven or eight fish and I did something that I don't know that I've ever did out here on the Delta and this is not a, a record breaker or anything but on three consecutive casts I threw out I caught a crappie, a striper and a largemouth bass all on this lure right here which you know that was a big win for me after you know going for a couple days in a row up at Don Pedro without a stinking bite I told you I was going to leave that alone, but I guess I got back to it. Anyhow, what I'm saying is you can come out here and, and probably have some fun fishing, uh, fish moving baits. Uh, I have been getting some reports now of people that are, when they're throwing uh, the jerk baits, changing color sometimes has made a, a difference. So, you know, you're always going to have something with a white belly, but if you're trying white belly blue back and you're not getting hit, um, throw on maybe a white belly with a chartreuse or a sexy shad or maybe a gold color. Change colors a few times and see if that doesn't turn the fish on. Um, but uh, with that, um, I think I mentioned that the water temperatures are dropping. It's, it's a beautiful time to be out here. The, we're going to get some cool weather and as that temperature drops and the water starts, water temperature also starts dropping, I think it's going to trigger the big transitional bite out here. It's been good the last you know two to three weeks but when that temperature really drops we're gonna get a good transitional bite out here. So stay with faster moving baits, uh, change up your colors a little bit. I'm going to be out about, I'm, I'm gonna to try to be on the river three or four days this week because I really think something's gonna break and I'm gonna be moving around. Next week I'll have a solid report on what i am uh, been doing out here and I want to have you guys make sure that you're sending me reports so you're not just hearing what I'm doing and what you know somebody in the shop is is getting uh, information from so make sure you're sending me the reports I also want to let you know that I <clears throat> I think uh, next Tuesday I'm going to be uh, uploading a video that's called uh, tactical bass leaders and you know everybody talks about this Oh, this is the bait you should use or this is the bait you should use. Nobody talks about how you should set them up and in or on the Delta especially where a lot of us are using braid with either mono or floral leaders. We're not using a straight braid or straight mono or straight floral. The leader setup is extremely important and I'm going to go into a lot of detail and I'm going to talk about knots and lines and leaders and uh, give you an idea of how I set up some of my favorite um, uh, baits out here as far as the leader system goes and I think it's extremely important I want all you guys to watch that and I'm gonna go over the whole system not just what line I'm using but how I'm setting up the leaders how long they are how I'm pairing it with the rod and the bait and also I'll be talking about drags on reels which have a big part 
when it comes to how you're setting up and the knots that you're using. People don't think about that. All of that will be included in Tactical Bass Leaders. That's my plug. So guys, thanks for watching. Thank you guys for um, uh, all the well wishes for the tournament. I needed a little more luck and probably a lot more skill, but uh, I'm not going to let that get me down. <sighs> Maybe after after today, I'm not going to let that get me down. I'll tell you one more thing. I came home from Don Pedro. I gargled with Listerine. I got a bottle of bleach out and scrubbed my whole body down because I just have to get that stink off of uh, off of me from Don Pedro. And, and like I said, I caught about, I don't know, six or eight fish this morning. I'm on my way. If you guys get out on the Delta, you're going to be on your way. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. See you guys next week.